Here in Las Vegas, the round of eight has begun. The playoff field cut in half. The pressure double. A little bit of three luck. Wide, three wide. Oh, a little bit of risk. And the save of the year by Kyle Larson. A whole lot of focus. Don't get distracted by the flash of the Vegas Strip. Drivers must keep their eyes fixed on the wave of the green and the call of the checkers. Oh, there's a whole lot of fun to be had on the Las Vegas Strip. We're less than 20 miles from the Strip here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. And yes, there's fun. Yes, you can be happy, but then there's business. And here we go. And look at the man walking up the middle of pit road. He is the man in the middle. Pardon the pun. Kyle Larson, the man who sits atop to the tune of 33 points above as we go into the round of eight in the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. Yes, things are getting really serious. The walls are closing in. Pressure is rising. Welcome, folks. Lee Diffie, Steve Latart, Jeff Burton. Stevie, this is where the drivers describe it as you're racing for a reason. Well, the goal is to make the championship race in Phoenix as one of the championship four drivers. 16 enter the playoffs, eight remain. But if you looked at that li list, and you were just last with us on NBC last Sunday, you said, well, the list has changed. Alex Bowman was in, Joey Logano was out. Now it's the opposite. Logano in, Bowman out after Bowman disqualified for not making minimum weight after the race in Charlotte. It's odd, we don't hear about weight, but it's pretty black and white, the rule. You have the car has to weigh a certain amount before the race, and it has to weigh a certain amount after the race, a half percent lighter, they give you a little leeway for issues. The 48 was unable to meet that minimum weight. Hendrick took a day or so, 24 hours, to make sure there was nothing they wanted to appeal Jeff. They said, nope, it's on up. Jeff Gordon said, a mistake, just cut it too close. So for that reason, this guy has another berth, Joey Logano and Bowman, he's out. And, and Alex Bowman, he stepped up in these playoffs. Uh, the whole team did. They had a lot of speed. Uh, he, you know, think about, just look at the results they were having. And if they could carry that into this round, who knows what they could have done? I mean, you're starting to have to think about them as being championship contenders because of their consistency and the performance. And now they're out. And um, no fault of Alex Bowman's. And, and that has to be exceptionally frustrating to make that mistake with that much on the line. It's one of those moments in the sport you look at and you're like, that is a huge failure by a massive team, a well-run team. It shows you uh, how close everyone's pushing it. But uh, I, I just, it'd be hard to sleep at night after putting the effort that he put in and then be out for that reason. Well, it's particularly gut-wrenching because before the playoffs, we've documented it so many times about the rumors that Alex's job, his drive was on the line. He answered those rumors by just driving brilliantly in every phase of these playoffs and then to be found to be 17 pounds underweight uh, last weekend at the Roval. After the Roval, it was probably two, three hours after the race concluded that we all started to hear the rumblings and rumours and then the news came out. So pretty, pretty big uh, blow, gut punch to the Ally 48 team at Hendrick Motorsports. But uh, to Steve's point, Jeff Gordon just said, hey, that's on us. We cut it too close. Uh, every single team up and down pit road in the NASCAR Cup Series um, kind of walks that tightrope. Uh, you know what the, the variances are, you know what the tolerances are, and you try and get as close to it as you can. And uh, unfortunately, we were over. So in addition to Steve, Jeff and myself, we've got Kimmy Kuhn here as well. Good afternoon, Kim. Good afternoon. It's a beautiful day here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. As we dive into practice, what are teams looking for over these practice sessions? Well, when I talk with them, it seems like a long list. A car that drives well, especially over the bumps in one and two. A car that's got maneuverability, versatility, because there's so many lanes you can use here at Vegas. Then you want a short run car because restarts are so important, but you also want it to be good on the long run. And all the crew chiefs I talked to said you can't really compromise towards one single thing. A team that's got it figured out, Kyle Larson in the five team they've won the last two Vegas races so Steve and Jeff as we look at that list what are you prioritizing and is there enough time in this short practice to figure all those things out well Kim this is this is a very difficult racetrack because both ends of the racetrack are different from one another it's very rough over in one and two and as luck would have it the wind is blowing from 
three and four towards turns one and two. That in itself, Steve, is going to make the cars drive worse than one and two, and that is the worst end of the racetrack. So I think a reasonable compromise between the speed you can have in one and two versus three and four, that to me is what I want to, that's what I want to try to figure out. It seems like a no-brainer, but the answer for me is speed. We're going to talk a lot about the bumps. Drivers are going to comment a lot about the bumps, but Diff, the truth is, I've had slow cars that ride bad over the bumps and fast cars that ride bad over the bumps. The one consistent is their bumps are not fun to go over. So you just want the car to be able to make kind of raw speed around the racetrack. You don't want the driver to have to be so far on the edge just trying to keep up. And the crew chiefs and drivers talk about those bumps after a summer here in the Nevada desert. So we ease our way into practice, 20 minutes per group. Christopher Bell, here he is, and Jeff, I don't think enough people are talking about this guy as far as championship contender. Yeah, well, they're, they're not paying attention because uh, they have a lot of speed right there. You can hear the race car hitting the racetrack. Why do bumps matter? Why do we talk so much about them? Because you want to get the car as low to the racetrack as you can in the back of the car, Steve. And this end, listen, never heard it hit the racetrack. So you, want, you can run the car lower over here in three and four than you can in one and two. So that makes the car not drive as well in three and four because you want to get it lower, but you can't because over here it'll bottom out. Here, here in the you racetrack, some scuffing there, yeah. Two completely different, and you know, and and you know, fifty thousandths of an inch makes a difference in how these cars drive. All right, Stevie, you're coming here, round of eight. You're back in your crew chief spot on the pit box. What do you tell your driver? It's, and, not, it's not time to be conservative anymore, right? I think you have to feel that it's time to win a race. And when I look at this nine car, that's what comes to mind. I was actually talking with Alan this weekend. And, you know, of course, he would like to win more races. But their consistency is just so impressive at this nine car. and. And I asked him, you know, is consistency going to be enough? And him and I kind of agreed, well, tell me what kind of round it's going to be. If a lot of guys wreck and there's a lot of issues, then consistency is enough. But Alan and I both agree that even if you aren't winning, you have to be a winning car, meaning you have to be battling top two or three each stage, each race. If this nine car can find just a little bit more pace, I think they're going to be one to definitely deal with. And you just caught a quick glimpse of the Allen that Steve was talking about. Allen Gustafson, the crew chief, 20 years a NASCAR Cup Series crew chief, which is quite the tenure. And this man here, who is a NASCAR Cup Series champion, Chase Elliott, just loves it. Jeff, what is it about when the pressure and the moment rises? The good ones are there. They're ready. They handle it. You're in that, you're in that league. You know what it's like to perform at the top. You're a two-time winner here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. So what is it about these guys? Well, it's interesting. Chase Elliott said he loved his time of year because it did matter. Every race mattered more. And so as a competitor, you love the privilege of pressure. You love the fact that if you get it done, you're going to move on and have a chance to win the championship. And uh, you can't have that without the consequence of if you don't get it done, right? And so... Uh, having the opportunity for you and your team to come and take on everybody with the common goal, Kim, that is uh, that is what being part of a team is all about. Absolutely, Jeff. You know, Lee mentioned Alan Gustafson time in the sport. He spent two decades at this level, and I asked him how that works in the team's favor, and he said because of the time he's been in the sport, he has seen the highest of highs and the lowest of lows, and how does that work in their favor? Well, he said it remains calm is what he's able to do. Just stay calm. He doesn't let emotion overtake him when they are in the lowest of lows. They can always pull themselves out. And so using that veteran experience in their favor when they're battling against these seven other teams in this round. From the nine to the 11, here's Denny Hamlin. And Denny's sentiments echo that of Chase Elliott. It's time for a win. Maybe, maybe you could squeak your way in on points, but it's time for a win. And this guy has not won since earlier in the year. Just checking my notes here. Dover, I think, from memory. So it's been a long time.
Can it be? Can it be this weekend here in Vegas? We know how strong he is at mile and a half. And if a win were to come for the Joe Gibbs Racing number 11 and Denny Hamlin, that would be unbelievable considering the tumultuous playoffs run that he has had. But that's what this time of the year is all about. Practice continues here for the South Point 400. You'll see it tomorrow on NBC. And here is a hometown favorite. And there would be a lot of people uh, who would enjoy to see Kyle Busch get a victory here in Las Vegas and keep that streak alive. We've mentioned it many weeks in a row about that goal, that drive. He hasn't won in 53 races. And if he can just get one in the next four, uh, it'll be something really, really special. As he continues to build his young history with Richard Childress Racing. Jeff and Steve are uh, going to take a break this segment and uh, want to welcome in our Hall of Famer, d date Dale Jarrett, and most recent race winner from JTG Doherty Racing, Brad Doherty. Brad, are you still buzzing after Talladega? Lee, I'm still on high, man. I'm hoping we can, <laughs> I'm hoping the 47 can bring that on over here to Vegas. It'd be a great place to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> As we look at Kyle Busch here, and Lee, you were pointing out, uh, hasn't won in those 53 races. Yeah, he's finished in the top 10, six out of the last eight races here. He could care less about any position except first. He doesn't care to finish second, doesn't want to extend a top 10 streak here or anything like that. It's all about getting this win. And I mean, it's something that nobody's ever done. And that's, you know, he loves being able to talk about things and have people talk about things that others haven't accomplished. Halfway through this practice session and Martin Truex Jr. from Joe Gibbs Racing, the 19 leads the way as far as the speed chart is concerned. And it's a very similar topic for Martin as well. Uh, if he can go out on a high, his last four races as a full-time Cup Series driver. So if he can uh, notch up a victory, that'd be really, really special. Brad, just want to go back to uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s victory at Talladega. How big was that for the team? And I ask you that as we're looking at Truex because I know James Small and the team and how much a victory does for an organization. What did it do for your team? Yeah, it, it's huge. And, you know, you're looking at, you're talking about my race team. It's a very small team. And, and Lee, when we go out, we designate four or five races a year that we potentially could win. And this is obviously one of them. And it's a huge shot in the arm. You know, Monday morning, the phone's ringing. People who are interested in being a part of our sport want to talk to you a little bit more. So it, it, it's very, very, very noticeable on the bottom line of your race team, plus the morale of your company. You guys work their rear ends off and gals, they give everything they got, even with a little race team like mine to do the best that we possibly can do. And you know, when you get a chance to win a race and, and you do do that, it just brings everything full circle. And then the thing you realize that's so difficult about this sport is you got to go race it again the next weekend. So uh, it, it's been a huge boost. And, and talking about Martin and, and Kyle and their streaks at this racetrack, both of these guys are, DJ, are extremely capable. We know the championship pedigree that these guys have. Kyle's had a little better performance as of late. Martin's had some tough luck, but at any moment, these guys are very capable. Yeah, we show here, uh, he's running up on a teammate at Joe Gibbs Racing there in, in Ty Gibbs. But, I, I, Brad, I want to bring up something about your driver and, and the, the things that you go through. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is outstanding. You know, has the talents really to win everywhere, but making the driver understand that these are the races that y'all are gonna put the most focus on. These other places, we're just gonna try to take care of business, get our best finish, and minimize the damage, if you will, in not tearing up race cars. Yeah, and that's been the most difficult thing for our, our team. Ricky is an excellent race car driver, and you know we haven't been able to give him the, the equipment he needs to go win Darlington. So if we've got a 15th place race car, 18th place race car, my conversations with Ricky have always been, finish there you don't need to try to finish eighth and his you know mindset and you know yeah. this better than anyone is i'm a racer and if i see an opportunity i'm going to take it i think the thing that ricky's done extremely well especially this season it's just the maturation of a, of a race car driver he knows on the days when we, we've missed it we can't overcome it in that seat but on the days we go places like nashville or dover or daytona or talladega or atlanta 
We think when we roll out of Harrisburg over there that we can win that race. And we're going to give him everything he needs to go and be successful. And he does a great job. And I think that's just watching a guy. You don't have to be 22 years old to drive these race cars. You can be 35. You can be 36 and go do your job at a high level, just like Ricky Stenhouse is doing. Well, that's a great point, Brad, because speaking of youth, here we see the 21-year-old Carson Hosevar, who leads the Rookie of the Year standings. And he had a pretty wild run last weekend, DJ. Uh, he was he was involved uh, in more than one incident, but uh, hey, youthful exuberance, I guess we can put it down to, but this guy has shown on more than one occasion he's got the speed, and I think himself and the team, Spire Motorsports, they're on an up, upward trajectory, and I think uh, the future looks pretty bright. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, Diff, that I'm sure he was somebody you'd heard the name, but since you've been on the telecast here for a number of weeks. This guy shows up in the top five, top 10 speed-wise everywhere, and he has something that that intangible of being able to go fast anywhere that you go. And that's not something you can teach, and I think he's the future star of this sport. Really um, kind of a, a refreshing personality, like he's a, he's a good young guy, and uh, he showed last week he doesn't mind <laughs> mixing it up a little bit. Um, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, Diff, and there's a lot of guys, they won't tell you, but I've heard the rumors and, and squeak. They're a little bit intimidated by this guy. Yeah. Uh, because he drives the wheels off that race car. And there's some guys out here that don't like racing with him. And I like that. I like that for Carson because that's just someone else he can take advantage of. There's a few cats that complain about how fast and some think he's reckless. I just think he's fast, young, and, and he's got the exuberance like he talked about, and he can take advantage of that. Well, I like to say, have a go. <laughs> and, he, and he has a go, yes, sir. that's for sure. <laughs> South Point 400 is the race tomorrow, and the naming rights sponsor is the South Point Hotel and Casino right here on the Strip. It's where the races stay. They're holding some of my money over there. <laughs> Just under three minutes left in this first group for practice for the South Point 400 as we welcome you back. Wow. When you talk about thinking you're somewhere and then you're somewhere totally different, that's the case for two-time Cup Series champion Joey Logano. At one point in time, less than a week ago, he thought he was out of the Cup Series playoffs. And then, as he was driving home with his wife, phone started to ping and there were some rumors swirling around and and finally he found out Kim that he was in and I kind of like Joey's comments this week where he said look it didn't change our goal because we were still in the owners points championship but now I'm back in as well so we can just keep going kind of twofold if that makes sense yeah the other thing I liked that he said he said it might look like we're underdogs from the outside but internally they feel very confident in their race team. The run that they can make in this round and the possibility that they make it to the championship for. Interesting though, Joey's saying he's got a loose condition. It went from a, a one loose to a one and a half loose. But the thing I'm paying attention to is Coleman Presley, his spot or the feedback he's giving Joey. He said, don't change anything in terms of how you're attacking one and two. But this is what stood out to me. He said, if you want to play around with something in the last couple of minutes of practice, Denny, is getting into three harder than you, but he lifts more, which is allowing him to get into four better. That's a lot of good information to see Joey Logano hitting pit road, kind of simulating the green flag stop, Steve. And, you know, we've been up here watching practice, watching speeds. Joey Logano, he did not take off with good speed at all. He was down in 15th fast, 15 fastest, but lap 34, 28, in that range, he was right there. Uh, with what I believe Hamlin, Elliott, and Logano, my eyes tell me they were the best three cars out of this group. But uh, this car did not take off with good speed. So you wonder if that air pressure, what is that? And if they make that car take off with good speed, will it have, have, have the advantage of the hang on speed later in the run? Uh, Jody also didn't really search around much. He did right on the bottom of the racetrack. I think there's some ability to move up, especially in three and four, go around the bumps, probably be better off overall. So. Definitely some room. He'll save that for the race. So keep that in his back pocket. And no, and no disrespect to, to Alex Bowman and that team, but they let a champion back in yeah. the round of eight. And you just don't want to go against Joey Legato and that team. They've proven over time they know how to handle it. 
as the seconds wind down in this first group for practice. Here's Chase Briscoe, one-time playoffs driver. New dad of three. Life's taken on a whole new perspective. New partner, Texas A&M. For you all you A&M fans, 7-7. Seven, seven. Currently with Mississippi State. Thanks for the update. Hey, well, you know, they're here. They're watching their NASCAR practice. They see a and They go, you know, wondered about my football team. I want to give them an update. Jeff, I know you're shocked that Steve's keeping an eye on college football. I didn't even know he liked football. <laughs> Halfway through practice. Back in a minute. <laughs> Mid-70s degree day here in the desert. Look at that blue sky, beautiful. We're in practice mode before we switch it up to qualifying mode. Another 20 minutes of practice, very valuable practice. And this guy here is Jeff, the overwhelming favorite uh, for this race. He's won the last two, the spring race and the fall race. And this five uh, is in a different zip code to everybody else this year. He is, he's led 20% of the laps this season, but as far as laps completed, he's 31st in the order, which just underscores the laps that he completes are quality. Well, look, we talk about this, we, we hear conversations between he and his crew chief, uh, Cliff Daniels, you know, quite often on the radio about, hey man, be calm, understand your situation, uh, you know, a little bit of concern about the number of wrecks that they get in, but he's running up front when he has these wrecks. It's not like he's running 20th, and, you know, we, how much do you slow him down? I mean, we talked about this several times. Crash and turn, turn two, Blaney oh around in the oh wall. Oh, boy. Reigning series champion. Round of eight playoffs driver. It looked like the left rear might have gone down. I pull the tire. Yeah, I, it, he, he drove into the corner, and as, as soon as he got there, the back end came around on it. Rear tires were, were part of conversation. I don't know if you ran over something, but when we go to these intermediate tracks, we have seen rear tires can be abused. Let's take a look at what happens, Jeff. Yeah, watch the left rear right here. Yep, flat. Driver's side impact. You know, we talked about teammate Joey Logano's slow in the first practice. Well, Blaney was last, teammate Sendrick 14th. Either one of those had great takeoff speeds, and you wonder if that's an air pressure thing. And with the rough bumps, car going through the bumps, Steve, you can damage the sidewall of the tire. I mean, you basically, hey, you see right there, dragging the diffuser. So the car is very, very low. So, so here's the thing. The car goes down, and it sits on shock stops. Mechanically, it can't travel any further. So then get to get to the diffuser lower from there, if you take air out of the tires, you know, the suspension doesn't have to compress, just as the tire squishes like a balloon, you know, the car gets low to the racetrack, creates way more downforce. We saw this a lot more often in years past. That, you know, Goodyear continues to try to build a more durable tire. The teams still try to take advantage of what they think needs to be the best. And listen, we're purely speculating what we know for sure is the left rear tire seemed to go down on corner entry. Look, he could have run something over on the back stretch. It's a windy day. Things blow around the racetrack. Maybe the tire was low on air. Maybe that's why he was bottoming out the lap before. Maybe it was too low on air. I know that Jonathan Hasser right here, the crew chief, will now have to prepare a backup car for Ryan Blaney. They won't get to qualify, and it's going to not the way you want to start the round of eight. Let's have a listen to some recent radio from the 12. Uh, I had no warning. My head hurts. I had no warning, man. Sorry. Uh, you can hear, you know, we get so accustomed to, to riding around in these cars, watching these wrecks. And you can hear in his voice the impact and how much it hurts. And Steve, this is it. This is the lap before. And the car is just bottoming out big time. You talked about it. See the left rear tire deflecting as yep. it runs through those bumps. So we can't say that that's how the team had it set or they had a slow leak. Correct. I agree with Jeff. The left rear is definitely deflecting and squishing. All the cars are going to do that. And we can't see three or four pounds of air pressure, 
you know, from a camera shot, it's nearly impossible. I mean, Brian Blaney couldn't feel it, right? This is a, this is a trained race car driver. If the tire was going down, you'd think he would feel it the lap before. The reigning Series Cup champion. A moment he did not want to experience. He's had seven DNFs this year, and a lot of them big crashes. Quick reminder that you can play NASCAR Fantasy Live for the playoffs. You can create an entry by picking five drivers plus a garage driver to compete. Fantasy Live lets you keep tabs of your lineup, making race adjustments to maximize your score. NASCAR.com slash fantasy. As we welcome you back to the desert, we're here in Nevada, and this is a wounded Menards Team Penske Ford. And here's a comparison. So this is the five of Kyle Larson going over the bump. You're going to see one little puff of smoke there, another one. You know, kind of what we'd expect. This is what the majority of the cars look like. So just in comparison, let's compare it to Blaney. We know these cars are going to bottom out because of the air pressure and the bumps, but just watch how much more violent and how much more smoke right there. And that's way more smoke off the back. What you're seeing is the vertical carbon fiber strakes on the diffuser dragging the racetrack. And then the next lap through, Blaney goes down in the corner, left rear goes flat, around he goes, goes into the wall. So once again, you know, we don't have the exact, listen to this hit. Once again, you know, the cars are all stopped with the rear suspension at the same amount of travel. The only way to really get lower from there is air pressure. So I don't know if the 12 is just lower in, you know, by settings or had a leak, the team will definitely look and see if there's a hole in the tire, if it's able to be, you know, viewed after it actually went flat and kind of came off the rim. Clock has been reset, so the rest of this second group can get their uh, very valuable laps in in the lead up to qualifying for the South Point 400. Lee Diffie with you here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Our Hall of Famer DJ, Dale Jarrett, Brad Doherty. What did you make of that, DJ? Yeah, it, very, very unfortunate. You know, when I was watching Blaney, I watched him go out, and I, he caught my eye as he went into turn three in that first lap, and he was really high up on the racetrack, where we didn't really see anybody else run until after they had quite a few laps on from the first group. And so I wasn't sure exactly what they had, but then as he went down into turn one and you saw that tire let go. And, you know, and, and let's make, I hear people talk about it, and people ask me a lot of times about all oh, the soft walls that these guys have now are nothing like the car. Let, let's not make the mistake of calling this a soft wall. It's a safer barrier. Yes, it does, does absorb a little more of the energy than what Jeff Burton and I went through at hitting concrete walls when we unfortunately had some problems years ago. But this is still a huge impact, and you could hear that from Ryan Blaney's voice when he radioed back to his crew. So I just hope that he's going to be okay. They can get another car ready. Yeah, it's going to be a tough uh, turnaround for them and, and you know start from the rear and, and do everything they need to do. But uh, just so unfortunate. But just, you know, you see the violent, how violent these rides are that these drivers are going through at a place that has some bumps. Taking a ride along, it looks like Tyler Reddick here. Now, this is a young man who obviously is a threat anywhere he goes. He had a, uh, you know, he had a good second place finish here in March. And he's won in the truck series. He's won in the Xfinity series here. Yeah, you just watch him every week. And you just expect him to be in the hunt, no matter where we go. He's so versatile. And you just keep waiting when he's going to put a couple of wins together in, in big moments. And, and this could be one of those times that he starts and rips off a couple of wins, DJ. Yeah, Toyotas were really good here back earlier this year for a, a lot of it. And then, of course, you had Larson that was just so fast and, and made everything happen and, and win the race. And he's won two in a row here. But you have to look at Reddick as one of those drivers. When you talk about who can walk away from here tomorrow, uh, looking ahead to Phoenix already. You know, there's, there's really only going to be one driver that can look ahead uh, to Phoenix. But, you know, is there someone like as we continue to ride along here, but I'll bring up a name, Ross Chastain. You know, this is the tire and, and so many things that are like Kansas, and we saw Ross Chastain go there. He and Kyle Busch both have opportunities to win that race, and then Ross did do the job there. So is, is he going to make life miserable uh, for all eight drivers uh, not having that golden ticket to Phoenix? Yeah, and that's what he usually does every weekend is he makes it miserable for everyone. <laughs> Ross will race you really hard, but 
you know, he's finished in the top five in his last four races here, so he's very, very good at this racetrack. One at Kansas, another mile and a half. So, yeah, is this the guy that could all of a sudden tomorrow walk away from this place and, and, and have a lot of pressure put on all of the competitors because he's walking away with the trophy headed to Phoenix. So, yeah, I, I like Ross's chances. Such a great, that's such a great conversation, Brad and DJ, because are we going to get into that spoiler mode again? You know, all of the eight in the round of eight, they're all saying the same thing, and that is we need a win. Got to get a win, lock ourselves in to the final four, the championship four. But will there be a spoiler that kind of makes things a little more difficult? Yeah, and as we look at Bubba Wallace, you could put him in that mix. I mean, he's run really well here the last probably 10 races of the season here, and it, it, he puts himself there. He's got a fast race car making good decisions. You know, and, and we talk about taking the win away. Even if they're not able to do that, what they're able to do is run up front in these stages, and that's taking points away. You know, regardless, if we have three playoff drivers that win these next three races, there's still a spot open. Somebody's going to get in on points. But if you're getting those points taken away during the stages and then at the end of the race, all of a sudden they've got top five finishes, then you're finishing further back. It might All it takes is one point, and whether you're part of the championship four as we move to Phoenix or not. That's right, racing against the field, and, and Bubba Wallace has had an outstanding season. He's had six top fives and 13 top tens, which is the most in his career yeah. in a cup car. So, yeah, any weekend, another guy who's, who's capable. And I thought that after he was eliminated, I thought he would be a serious threat, and he still could be because I thought it would free him up a little bit. We've seen Bubba in the past show how emotionally, you know, grounded and bonded he is with this sport. Well, I thought that emotional baggage could, was relieved a little bit, and I keep watching him as well. He's a guy that's going to race you hard, and you get to these racetracks where you get it, you keep it wound up, and you're going fast. He's a threat. Eleven and a half minutes left in practice before we switch over to qualifying mode here's a three-time vegas winner brad keselowski roush fenway keselowski rfk racing they've had a great deal of success here when jeff and steve come back in the next segment we'll talk to jeff about that as a two-time vegas winner and let's see if this guy can be a spoiler we were talking about spoilers about chastain or bubba wallace brad keselowski could be yeah, knows how to get it done. And, and Chris Busher, his teammate, uh, I noticed him in the, the first practice session, ran a lot of laps. He had a good car in the longer run, too. And in the, the times that I'm seeing that Brad put down there, uh, he, he had a reasonably fast uh, lap, but his car held on really well. And, and that's what you want as others start to fight handling issues. If your car doesn't fall off as much, put yourself right in position to be that spoiler. Yeah, Brad has the pedigree to, to have a lot of success here. He's got three wins here now the last you know, his last 10 races here he's not been great he struggled but that's with a new race team but i do expect i've seen the the progress from that that brad keselowski driven race car over the last 10 races and absolutely could be a threat so what's this guy gonna do tomorrow oh he gonna light him up we're gonna eat <laughs> we eating steak this week on ricky we've been eating bologna all season long we're gonna eat steak this weekend in vegas baby with that 47. <laughs> dj what's some Tell us about, from the driver's seat, the difference in time of day. And people are like, ah, there's no big deal, right? But, like, this time that we are in right now, we're in the last third of the race tomorrow. So race time is 11.30 local here. What, what, what does that do to, A, your mindset, how the car behaves, the whole, the whole time change difference? Yeah, well, first off, you're going to have a cooler track uh, because the, the nights are cooler here. You're going to be down in the 50s. It's not good going to heat up tremendously uh, by the time they get ready to start the race, but you're going to fight that issue as the day goes on. So you're going to fight the sun uh, in your eyes uh, at different parts of this racetrack. So it's going to make it difficult on the drivers as the race goes on. And then the racetrack itself is going to heat up, which means you're going to lose some grip. You're going to have to search around. The great thing about this racetrack is there are places to move around. We will see them use utilize at least three lanes up in turns three and four tomorrow. So you really have to be willing as a driver to search not just stay in what you have be willing to, to go try to find where there's just a little bit more group how about it kim you got dave blaney i believe uh, ryan, ryan blaney, i'm sorry yeah ryan blaney's been released from the medical center ryan we heard the strain in your voice on the radio first of all are you okay what are you feeling yeah yeah i'm, I'm all right um yeah just yeah blue tire um into turn one and just stinks and uh i didn't think it was i didn't feel anything odd 
like down the front stretch and just um, yeah, shame it ended our practice early and we got our uh, work cut out for us for a backup car and all that stuff. But um, hopefully we'll be able to fight back from it and uh, go go to work tomorrow. You mentioned you have the work cut out for you. How much do you have to overcome after an incident early like this? Uh, it's definitely a lot to overcome for sure. And, um, you know, starting in the back and, you know, no laps um, with this backup car. But uh, I got all faith in the world of our in our group and in our 12 group. And, um, you know, so I, I have confidence that hopefully we can make some hay tomorrow and uh, uh, do it early, you know, try to try to get up through there. So, uh, yeah, it sets you back a little bit with this team, you know, uh, they thrive under that type of pressure and, um, and things like that. So uh, I'm happy to be with a group like that and unfortunate situation that we're in, but we'll claw our way through. Nice positive attitude from Ryan Blaney after a hard hit here in practice. Yeah, Kim, it was a hard hit physically and psychologically it was a dent as well as the man who is the first one outside the cut line has got a big day ahead tomorrow. Five minutes left in practice, and you're looking at one of the championship favorites, William Byron in the 24 for Hendrick Motorsports, has scored more points than any other driver on mile and a half tracks this year. That bodes well for this weekend. We head to Miami, then the short track in Martinsville, and then we finish the season off in the championship four at Phoenix. How will this year play out for this guy who has just quietly gone about his business and had just an outstanding round of 12? Second, third, and third. Jeff, that's incredible consistency. And people should take notice of William Byron. Well, there's no question. And this is a championship contending team for sure. And they get hot. They get, you know, the next three weeks. Obviously, they're very important for everybody to kill but. Uh, this team, if you give the, if you send them to Phoenix, you have to consider them one of those guys that can get it done. Yeah, now he's going into this year. If he makes it the championship four with experience, having been there last year, this team, you guys mentioned an outstanding round of 12 with three podium finishes. They're hoping for the same kind of results in this round. Remember, William has won here. He's won at Homestead Miami Speedway. He's won twice at Martinsville. Right now, though, William's thinking he's too tight and one and two. So, Jeff, my question to you, we know you could run multiple lanes here. If you're crew team Rudy Fugel, are you going to go to work on the adjustments on that car trying to find a better balance, or are you going to rely on your driver to maybe search for a line that works better for the setup they currently have? Well, I don't, Kelb, I don't think you're ever going to get the car to drive the same in one and two as it does in three and four. And uh, the driver has to make a determination with the crew on which corner is most important. And also, what's the weather tomorrow? What's the wind going to be tomorrow? All of those things you have to understand because you're not going to be perfect and you're not going to make it do everything you want to do. So, Steve, what is the compromise? And and that's a, that's been an age-old question. And we don't know what the wind's going to do tomorrow. We don't know what traffic, how it's going to impact uh, the cars. So. That's where we have a lot of engineering support, but some of it just boils down to, to good old fashioned experience. Well, and William Byron understands the experience of his 13 wins. Five of them have come at these final four tracks. So they're tracks that he has feelings at. That's kind of like a Jimmy Johnson type stat. You know, when he had those runs, his numbers at the last four or five tracks we saw over the course of the season were always so impressive. A little bit different color scheme here on that Dollar Tree family dollar Toyota for Jimmy. A lot of moves in legacy over the last few weeks. Brian Campy, director of competitions, a crew chief changing, so. What do you make of that? I make it as an organization that tries to grow. You know, we talk all the time about improving, and some are public-facing maneuvers, some are made in private, and, and some are the tough decisions about change of personnel, right? They switched to Toyota this year, and I think now that they have a year of Toyota, they understand just how much information they have and perhaps how well they do or don't use that information and apply it on the racetrack. So Brian Campy has a long history in the sport and I've known him for years. He has a bright engineering mind, but a leadership type mind as well. And I think he can help lead this organization to use all of the information that someone like Toyota provides. Trackhouse Racing's Daniel Suarez, the Tootsie's Chevrolet. What a year it's been for this guy. What about a fighter? That's when I when I look at this car and I think about Daniel and the way that he's raced in these playoffs, just 
fight. Like, he never gives up. You know, one conversation that happens a lot when a team is eliminated from the playoffs, it feels like a letdown, because it is. The goal is to move forward. But at some point, I think you also have to step back in retrospect and kind of take the season as a whole. And for this team to win a race, to make the playoffs, to advance out of the first round of the playoffs, I think that's the direction we're going. We have seen his teammate in the playoffs before, but not this year. This year, this was the one and only track house entry. So Suarez and this 99 group has to feel good about that. And just 40 seconds left. So it's been a, uh, a group two practice session that was punctuated by a crash by Ryan Blaney, but some good laps turned in the lead up to qualifying. Yeah, Austin Dillon currently ninth fastest in this group, 17th fastest overall. Been watching Hillman's lap time. That's his 18th lap, 30-67. I think that's pretty decent. I saw Austin at the hotel. Big weekend for Austin. PBR's in town out here in Las Vegas as well, <laughs> and he owns one of the teams that are competing for the title in that. So it's a busy weekend. PGA. PBR, NASCAR, a lot going on in Las Vegas. He's into that too. He talked about it. it. He loves it. Extra lap. I would bet he's going to try to have a hard pit road entry runs this extra lap. Making the most of the practice session here. Watch this. How important is this, Jeff? Just, to, just getting an extra run at, at pit entry well I, I think it's vital I, I think there's only not one opportunity to learn how to do it and that's right now you see what he did he went way up the racetrack rather than staying on that white line and you can do that when nobody's behind you if you have complete clean racetrack then that is the preferred way to do it because it sets up your angle better but if you're in traffic then you no longer can do that you have to enter on the white line have a look at this a little earlier Kyle Larson on his entry to pit line. And he oh, misses oh, it. Oh. But that's 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 just there you go. So now you're just looking, now you set a visual. You and your spotter have a conversation. I want to break at the so-and-so sign or the so-and-so pole, and he reminds you of that when you're coming to the pits. We're up and running. The round of eight, practice done, qualifying's next. Three in a row in Vegas. Good thing, baby. How about this, heroes? Woo! Yeah, boys! Yeah! Still kind of smoky guy today, bud. Woo! This is your opportunity to make it to the final four. Yes! Yeah! He's off. Love. Vegas, baby! Hell yeah. Nice job. Ah! It's a uh, let's go get a championship, baby! Hi, hi, hi. Push it, push it, push it, push it. Check your flag. Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah, good job, guys. Go to Phoenix, boys. And a reminder of what is coming up. Here is the broadcast menu for you, NASCAR Countdown Live. 7 p.m. Eastern on the CW, and then half an hour later, the Xfinity Series roars into action here in Vegas. Tomorrow, network television, NBC, Countdown to Green at 2, and then we'll go racing at 2.30. It's the first race in the round of eight, and I can't help but think about Denny Hamlin's words there on that wonderful lead-in piece there where... He said, Steve, this is your opportunity to get into the championship four. Not only your first opportunity, but if you are fortunate enough to win this race, then while you still will compete at Miami and Martinsville, you just can focus all on Phoenix, right? It really does give these teams an advantage having that amount of time to kind of look ahead. And here are the combined practice speeds. Reddick stops the chart. So playoff driver the fastest. Kyle Larson, the only other playoff driver inside the top 10. Kim. Yeah, as we talked to Christopher Bell, we re rewind to this race last year. You won the poll, so let's talk qualifying at Vegas. We know during the race you can use multiple lines. Do you have those options when you're putting down a qualifying lap? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not going to spill my secrets, but I do feel like the, the line is pretty, pretty predictable here, especially with these race cars. It seems like there's a certain line that you have to run. Um, the last couple times, everyone's migrated into it, so I wouldn't expect it to be very different this time. You're on a streak of four top ten finishes in the last four races. What kind of momentum and energy is behind this team as you start the round of eight? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, we feel really good. Um, and, and on top of that, I love the racetracks that we have coming up. Las Vegas is one of my favorites and I, a place that I think that we can run really strong at. So qualifying at the intermediates, especially the high grip stuff like here, Kansas, Charlotte, this is probably my favorite thing to do. So I'm excited about this qualifying session. His favorite thing to do and something he's actually very good at as well. Christopher Bell has won, Stevie in the round of eight the last two years in a row, which obviously then leads to the fact that he's been in the championship for the last two years in a row. Yeah, and a quick championship update, right? One of our playoff drivers, the 12 of Blaney, pretty big accident. See here the work on the 12 car. Well, Goodyear has reached out to me with a puncture on that left rear tire. So Jeff, they were able to look at the tire, took it apart, dismounted it, and a clear puncture. So in Goodyear's opinion, something was run over on the racetrack, air comes out of the left rear, causing this accident. So, you know, that we, we had pointed out that the car looked low, was definitely hitting the racetrack, and Goodyear followed up. We appreciate their time and effort to get the fans the up-to-date information. And I think if you're the team, that's actually a better result, right? Absolutely. To know you had a puncture, Absolutely. because now, over, if you don't have that overnight, you're like, oh no, what do we do to air pressures? Joe, John Hunter Nemechek, a 29.62. It's a pretty good pace from what we saw in practice. All right, let's go. Here is the 15 of Cody Ware for Rick Ware Racing. good recently we only we don't see him for a full season it's a familiar storyline of, of seat swapping with Kaz Grala and sharing this ride and he's had some good results recently I think very underrated driver good road racer see him running some IMSA races does a good job when he drives this car Justin Haley race three with this team I believe yeah, swap between Rick Ware Racing and Spire. Seven starts here at Las Vegas. Ran inside the top 10 back in the spring of 23 in eighth place position. This is actually their fourth race together. Time flies, doesn't it? Seems yeah, like it was just yesterday. He's coming home back to Spire in the Gainbridge 7. He yeah, had that seventh at Talladega, so a highlight so far in those four races. You know, and with this moving forward into next year for this team, what a luxury to get some races together, to be able to spend some time, build on that going into next year. And this team, Spire, continues to bring good race cars. And I'm interested to see over the off season if they can even step it up even more. If so, already they're, being, they're a contender for race wins. It's very interesting to see what they could do next year. And bottom left, that's the 12 car backup. Team Penske backup, so they'll unload and wrap this car with Blaney's colors on racetrack, SVG in the 16. A bit of a struggle in practice. Pretty far off on speed. I really think this is going to be the battle next year. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Diff, for SVG, right? It's just, he's learned a lot in Saturday, but Sunday is the, the deep end of the swimming pool. I mean, these guys are so, so good. I think these cars are harder to drive than the Xfinity Series cars at these high-speed ovals for sure. The feel is so different, and the problem that drivers talk about all the time is they don't know where the limit is even after driving them for three years or so they can come around on you so quickly it's hard to find that so as van gisbergen finishes his lap chase briscoe begins steve can i bring you back to that uh, bottom box we had where team penske are going into get ready mode for that backup car for Ryan Blaney. What's that like as a crew chief? What, what do you tell the team? Well, it's what, shifted what, over you... years. So years ago, each team had their own. So you just kind of unloaded it, it was all ready to go. Now every organization is kind of required to only have a minimum. It's, it's different for how many cars you have in the field. But I think at this point, you kind of get everybody together. The biggest fear as a crew chief is everybody wants to help that too many people are touching it. At some point, you just have to say, okay, listen, let's have our core group Get with your car chief, set a specific plan on what needs to be done, whether that's the interiors we see Ryan Priest take the green flag, maybe the driver's seat isn't correct for Blaney, maybe the setup's not correct, maybe what we can figure out what engine needs to go in it. Get that to-do list and then almost take a breath, as crazy as it sounds. You have so much ahead of you, but really come up with a plan. You have time. NASCAR's going to allow you time. Take that time and make sure you're prepared. Coming to the end of the lap for Ryan Priest. Jumps his way up to fourth as we check in with Kim. 
Yeah, when we closed out our broadcast on Sunday, Joey Logano was out of the playoff picture. This weekend, you're now back in it. What's the roller coaster of emotion been like for you and the team this week? Um, you know, it's uh, probably the roller coaster happened more on Sunday evening uh, after the race than, than anything else. But, um, you know, our job was to, to go here and win no matter what, what the circumstances were. You know, we were in on the owner's points anyways at the end of the roll and um, now we're in on the drivers, so that's great. But, um, you know, the job is still the same here. We come out to Vegas, put our pencil and Mustang in victory lane. Joey Logano, a three-time winner here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. You know, it always amazes me. You know, the development of the garage area. These are the same rules that they ran in the spring, yet that lap for Justin Haley, that 29-37, that was good enough to make the second round wow. in the spring. And I will see, but I don't know if it's going to be good enough today. Looking at practice speeds, it might be. So far, he's good over Briscoe by a couple tenths. Maybe Haley's just put a lap down that we didn't expect, or at least I didn't expect out of the seven car in qualifying after watching practice. Promising start here from Ty Gibbs. This would be a good test. And this is kind of tracking right on top of the seven. Ascension, you see the drivers running the bottom of three and four. The one, the, the middle of one and two. This is a good lap right here. Boom, P1. Lost a little time late in the lap, but still good enough. 29-3-0. But only seven hundredths better than Haley, which tells me that Justin did a really nice job in that seven car. Speaking of Spire, team car here, 71, Zane Smith. He was fourth fastest in practice in this group. I like that line. Just avoid the bumps on the bottom. Just run the middle. <laughs> Still green, two tenths of a second to the good. Cutoff is to Berry in fifth. Still looking good for Zane Smith. How about that? Goes to P2. Nice work. Qualifying continues here in Vegas when we come back. The one and only Las Vegas Strip. Oh, it's good to be back. And NASCAR is back for the second time this year. But there's a little heightened importance on this weekend because we are in the playoffs and the round of eight we're in qualifying if you're just joining us welcome back working our way through the field to set the grid for tomorrow's south point 400. this is todd gilliland front row motorsports and the clock says red so he's a little off at the moment lost most of it and one and two, the entrance in the middle of three looked pretty good. Lost a little bit off of four. So Todd finishes in seventh as we transition to the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. Had a good practice run, Steve. Looked very good in practice. The Toyotas, we expect to be good here at Las Vegas. High speed oval. And Truex, a really nice one and two carry speed all the way down the back stretch. Still looking good, still in the green. Two and a half tenths to the good. Watch the 19 jump up, finishes his lap, and Martin Truex Jr. joins his JGR teammate in the top two. And see how stacked it is in the 30s, right? 35, 36, 37, second, third, and fourth. Kyle Busch going to run the apron coming to the green. Nearly wide open. Just a few quick kind of breeze of the throttle. Let's watch three and four. Look at that throttle trace. Bottom left of your screen. Out to half throttle. Just a couple seconds to get it to come down to the bottom of the racetrack. And really nice three and four. Still looking good. And it's going to be a top five for Kyle Busch. A lot of good race cars left to go here. All the playoff drivers in this group will go out last. We've told the Chris Busher story many times, and unfortunately not uh, 
going through into the playoffs, but that magnificent win at Watkins Glen. So, Jeff, at this stage of the year, with just four to go, are you already thinking, looking, planning on 2025? You are. You have to. Be, you have to start. You have to think about it all the time. Uh, you may be trying to try some things. Otherwise, you wouldn't try. Uh, if it doesn't work out, the penalty just isn't that big this time of year. So it gives you the opportunity to experiment a little bit, Kim. Yeah, for Alex Bowman, not the weekend you want as you're no longer in the round of eight. Where were you and, and what was your reaction when you got the news that you were DQ'd? Yeah, uh, not a good Sunday night for me for sure. But um, yeah, that's part of life sometimes. So really just focus on coming here and trying to go fast. We had an okay practice and I feel like our, our ally 48 Camaros pretty decent so um, I don't know just try and figure out how to run wide open for qualifying here and uh, go from there yeah that's a tough one that's a really tough one for Alex Bowman just um, he's gonna put on a brave face for sure not only this weekend but for the remainder of the playoffs is Carson Osava what a lap well great job by Spire a 34 for the 77 car, a 36 for the 71 car, and a 37 for the seven car. So, great job. Let's talk playoffs drivers. Danny Hamlin. Let's see what kind of a grid spot he can get. I thought a great drive last week. You, know, you think about the finish, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, some impressive numerical finish, but having to step up Late in that race, in the second and the third stage, to get the finish that he got, and we'll look at this lap. All in three and four, two, Jeff. One. Pretty much matched. Gibbs speed through one and two and down the back stretch, but carried so much throttle into three and four, and survived the last round of the playoffs. In my eyes, just sort of survived it. Uh, that's not going to work in this round. You're going to have to. You're going to have to run in the front. He was out, and then he was in. The playoffs, that is. Joey Logano, two-time champ. It was, a, it was a theme that we spoke about last weekend. Does he have a chance to stay alive and become a three-time champion? Well, now we know. Courtesy of the disqualification of the 48, the 22 is in. Logano is still alive. And let's see if he has a shot at getting back-to-back -back poles. He goes to provisional P2. That'll lock him in the top three. I mean, I'm sorry, the top five. Yeah, Hamlin, Logano, Gibbs with two to go. They're locked in. Josevar and Truex are the only two that can be removed. And that all comes down to Elliott and Bell. I, I, in practice, this nine car to me, certainly one of the best on long run pace. Right now, giving up some speed off turn two. Really tight, really tight with that top five spot with Martin Truex Jr. Hundreds of a second. Can he get that time back? It's super close. Not quite. Eighth. So that right now has him we'll have him back in, you know, mid-pack. All right, let's see what Christopher Bell can do. Good start, stays green. Staying green. He's gonna push his way into this top five by a mile. There'll be three playoff drivers in this top five. From this first group, well done, Christopher Bell, 29-153, the 20 straight to the top. We're continuing with qualifying here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, the South Point 400 weekend. It's the round of eight in the NASCAR Cup Series in this drive for a championship. Something that this man here on track knows all too well, the seven-time champion, Jimmy Johnson, is back. For his team that he is a co-owner of, Legacy Motor Club, always great when we can talk about Jimmy Johnson on track. 
And Jeffy's, pardon the palm, but he's just driving his own life, right? He's dabbling in some work with us on NBC. Uh, does a little bit of driving, the team ownership. Like he's got, he's got a lot of things going on post full-time career. He does, and I talked to him a lot at Talladega about the team ownership, and uh, we we talked about it early, earlier. A lot of changes going on over there, and he's involved in all those. He's excited about the future of this team, and feels like they can get the right people in place and compete for championships long term. That's a pretty good lap for Jimmy. I know he has struggled a little bit to find the comfort in this car not a ton of starts in this style of car and you know that would have been right there with chase just behind chase Elliott. you know 10th he ran basically kyle bush ran corey lajoy is a little behind on this lap three and a half tenths off at the moment as he finishes his qualifying run second for the time being as we check in with Kim Kuhn, Kimmy. Yeah, Tyler Reddick and this 45 team had so much fight last weekend to get themselves into the round of eight. As we look at Vegas though, in the spring you finished second, you've got an Xfinity Series win here, a truck win here. What suits you about this racetrack? Uh, I think the fact that it's just mile and a half. Um, you know, these type of racetracks have been good for me uh, as I transition into being a asphalt stock car driver. So uh, yeah, just have a lot of lanes at places like this um, and you just, you go fast. So I, I enjoy going fast, so. Yeah, it's uh, been a nice start to our day uh, to see the speed out of our Jordan brand Toyota Camry. But obviously, we got to go out there and execute qualifying. He mentioned execute qualifying. I asked him what's going to take to be top five in Group B. He said a 29-1, he thinks. Tyler Reddick, as Eric Jones finishes his lap and he goes straight to the top. Tyler credited his crew chief, Billy Scott, uh, incredibly with last week's performance. And he said... You know, in that second stage, we were just trying to stay alive with a heavily damaged car as we see Noah Gregson on track. It was a pretty remarkable performance last week from that 45 team. It really was, and I love the call with about 30 laps to go. Billy Scott hitting that 45, put some tires on it, and it was a little bit of a Jordan-esque move, which is I'm gonna let my driver have the ball. If we're gonna make it out of this round, I wanna be on offense passing cars. The 45 was able to do it. The slap by Noah Gregson should be good enough for P1 at the moment. Hometown race for Noah. Got a lot of friends and family out here. Good job, Win. Good job, yeah, absolutely. 29-381, here is Alex Bowman. So now I think for this team, uh, imagine the roller coaster that this team has been through. They stepped up in these playoffs, brought their best. Then they are, they're out due to the weight infraction and now they got to find a way right these four races matter where how high can we finish in points what can we accomplish as a team we can't give up on each other good lap right here so far and this is when it gets hard diff when things don't go the way you want them to how are you going to respond to that right this was a good lap straight to the top 29 168 that is almost matching Christopher Bell's top time from the first group. So even though he's been bounced out of the playoffs, Alex Bowman is still very much on it. It's so caught up as we get in our year, Steve. There's a near, next year, next year, right? And you cannot let this year, the disappointment move into next year and have a good, good run like Alex Bowman just did is important to keep the positive momentum going. South Point 400, South Point car on track. Daniel Hemrick, he's a few tenths of a second off at the moment. He's going to slide into fifth place. Kim? And Lee, one of the best performances of the round of 12 was William Byron in this 24 team. Top three finishes in all three races. How do you replicate that in this round? Well, it's just totally different racetrack. So they were a little bit tighter than we want to be in practice, but um, you know, hopefully our balance here in qualifying is you know, as expected and going to need a lot of throttle. So. Uh, just, just, you know, want to commit to that and, and understand what the grip level is coming to green and, and just see how it goes. See how he goes in just a moment. Austin Dillon on track, the boot barn Chevy for RCR. Looking good at this point. And Dillon pushes his way into second place. Top five from group one. 
Bell, Hamlin, Logano, Gibbs and Hosovar. We'll see them again here shortly, but we're in the midst of group two and this is Daniel Suarez. Right on that line, nothing in it. Talking about hundreds of a second. How much throttle? I mean, it is full commitment around this racetrack. I mean, he barely came off the throttle in three and four. Look at this. To provisional fourth for the track house racer. That's a P4 for right now. Jeff, I think that's what makes this qualifying so difficult. We watch Chastain here and just see how much throttle you use around here. It is, it is I mean, a small percentage of the last you're not wide open. He hasn't lifted yet. Let's just don't. Yeah, according to telemetry, he hasn't lifted yet at all. I would look at the lap time, would agree. And the problem with that, Steve, is you drive in the corner as a driver, and you are committed to that much throttle. If things don't go well, it's wrecking. There is period. It's because you are committed to full throttle, and the car doesn't talk to you quick enough to be able to react to it. And uh, that 15 is, there's a lot of drivers looking at that telemetry right now saying, okay, he, he did it. He flat footed it all the way around here. Can I do that? Chastain to the top is a couple of Hall of Famers, a couple of former teammates and old friends having a good old catch up chat. Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson. Just a few wins. Amongst Just a few. Them. Yeah. What's 11 championships? You know, what's 11 championships between the group? Like 100 and, oh, I don't know, 60-something wins. U.S. Grand Prix this weekend at Circuit of the Americas, and Jeff spent a little time at, in Austin yesterday. Did a helmet swap with Fernando Alonso. If you have never been, yes, it's everything you expect it to be. Las Vegas. There's a little quick snapshot of downtown and on the strip as we bring you back to the racetrack. Lee Diffie, Steve Letart, Jeff Burton, and this is Harrison Burton in the Dex Imaging. Wood Brothers Ford. We're in qualifying mode at the moment. The top five has been set from group one. We're establishing the top five from group two. Yeah, decent speed through one and two, but it looked like it just got tight to me. Middle of three and four, you saw the throttle go down to 50% a couple times. Probably thought he was going to overrun the front tires. That just takes all your speed away. I mean, after we saw Chastain that, I'm not saying he didn't move the throttle pedal a little bit, but so little our telemetry wouldn't even register off the gas. So wide open was P1. Michael McDowell on track now. Front Row Motorsports loves Ford, Keselowski, Wallace, Sindrick, Blaney, Reddick, Byron, and Larson to come. Ryan Blaney with that big practice crash. Tough day for the reigning series champion. Looking good for Michael McDowell at the moment. Only a few, few races left for Michael McDowell and this team. He's moving to Spire next year. He has to feel good about what he's seeing out of Spire yes. with those yeah. speed they're bringing to finish the year. And I, I tell you, Michael McDowell, it's a big loss to, to uh, front row. He's been a big part of that company for a long time. Oh, Brad. It's on the back of his car moving around a lot, but it didn't hurt his speed. Noah Gregson keeping a really watchful eye on the monitor and on the clock because he's going to get bounced out, and he does. Keselowski to fifth. Just a handful of drivers to come, and here's Bubba Wallace. Come to the green, almost a half a tenth down, just entering turn one. One of 
the right direction off of four. Oh, it's close. It's really close. Thousands of a second. Well, oh. you did all you could. That was wide open for P6. <laughs> well, don't want to hear about it. <laughs> don't want to hear about it. But he did do all he could do. It was super close between Keselowski and Wallace. As we now watch Austin Sindrick. Using all the racetrack. There's two guys in that lower box that we'll see in the next phase of qualifying. Carson Hosevar, Denny Hamlin. Both had really good qualifying runs, second and fifth. Here you go. Third for Sendrick. Playoff drivers, we won't see Blaney. Remember that accident in practice? They're working on a back car for Ryan Blaney. So Reddick, Byron, Larson, the three playoff drivers in this round. Reddick trending the right direction. With two to go behind him, he wants to be at least third. If he ends up third, he knows he'll advance to the next round of qualifying. Well, this one's gonna be fast enough. Well, he's just going to go all the way to the top, so there would be no question. Boom. Uh, P1. P1 Fast. with authority. Fastest lap of the day. It's going to be a fascinating ride through these remaining four races in the playoffs. We're in the round of eight, and for Reddick and Logano, particularly after the, the thrills they gave us last weekend, are they in, are they out, are they in, are they out? There was no doubt about this guy. The round of 12 that he had, Jeff. Second, third, and third for William Byron. How about this pace? This is the William Byron from the beginning of the year. Remember, he won three races right away in the first few of the year. It's been a quiet summer. He's back. He's turning it up when it counts. The Daytona 500 winner goes to P2 oh provisionally. God. And then there's Mr. Las Vegas. Back-to-back -back wins here. Coming off a dominating win last week at the Roval. 62 laps led. Dominated at Bristol earlier in the playoffs. Six wins on the season. A pretty long list of accomplishments this year. He'd love to keep it going with the pole to get the round of eight kicked off. He's have a good three and four to move himself into the top five. Still in the green, comes to the line. And car five, position five. Just bumps Austin Sindrick out. Reddick said it should take a 29-10. You had to be a 29-1. Tough, tough day for the reigning champ, Ryan Blaney. For the other seven drivers in the round of eight. How is this South Point 400 going to play out? Well, we will set the first five rows when we come back. Three playoff drivers in each group. Christopher Bell, Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano in Group B, Tyler Reddick, William Byron, Kyle Larson. No Ryan Blaney. He crashed out in practice. And then Chase Elliott is the only other outsider so that's a good spread as we get ready to go into the next phase of qualifying it's going to be hotly contested well qualifying is important because track position on these high speed tracks dirty air is so important jeff so let's take a look at our virtual toyota car here we're actually going to take you inside this trailing car you see the dirty air it's bright it's white that's what you're trying to avoid so you move left you can move right you try to find some cleaner air we're trying to show the fan at home kind of what the drivers are imagining, right? They're seeing this dirty air in their head. They know where there's no downforce for the trailing car. They know offset to the left or offset to the right, there's more downforce available. And that's why they love this racetrack because this track is wide enough and has enough grooves with enough grip that you don't have to run right behind the car in front of you. You can jump out, you can go to the outside, you can go to the inside. We'll see it a lot in one and two. It takes a little longer in three and four to get that upper groove worked in, but 
That's why we. That's why the drivers like this racetrack, and we've seen so many competitive races here. Basically, in line down the straightaway is diff, and then somewhere else, wherever that guy in front of you goes, try to find a few feet either higher or lower in the corners. So well, it's quite appropriate we look at Joey Logano. We show you on the left the playoff standings, and I kind of. I know this this takes me back to before the playoffs began remember this guy won the first race in the playoffs uh he had this very calm joey had this very calm demeanor about him it's like yep this is what we do this time of the year this is what we do i'm ready for this this is why we uh we race all year and even after last weekend's you know um pretty crazy sunday night with alex bowman being dq'd he was racing racing like never before to try and stay in the driver playoffs uh, even though they're in on team owners points, um, it, it, it still didn't phase him. He was like, yep, yep, let's let's keep doing what we do. One driver not in the playoffs, but is always fascinating to watch, is Ross Chastain. Yeah, Lee, he was one of the fastest in Group B, makes it to the next round of qualifying. So how can you make your lap better the second time around? Well, keep my hands from shaking too much, Kim. First of all, uh, our Worldwide Express Chevy, um, it's supercharged on the hood and, and it and with with WEX, and that lap was supercharged to commit that level. I hadn't seen anybody when I went out um, before I got in the car, hold it wide open, and I did, and then I saw guys do it after me. So uh, we set a trend there, and they went, went even faster. So I've got to tidy up a few things, but um, yeah, I can just maybe take a shorter distance to go faster because I was already wide open. So the only thing I asked Phil Surgeon and the mics was just please let it do the same thing. And if I go lower, don't let it hit the ground. And um, yeah, that was a, a big commitment lap and um, proud of it and try to go re replicate it. The last time we were at a mile and a half was Kansas. You played spoiler amongst the playoff drivers. To play spoiler this weekend, what are you going to have to do? Hold it wide open and qualifying. <laughs> Step one. Um, but really, that doesn't have much bearing on tomorrow, other than pit selection, making sure we have an opening and hopefully be down at the, the turn one end. And then um, we need our car to hang on better. Um, our, our Wex Racing Chevy just didn't didn't hold on on the long run quite as well. It's it's kind of our, our hit pattern. Um, that's why Kansas worked out so well with that 25 or so lap run. Uh, so we feel like we built some things in. We're trying. We're, we're trying not to. We're trying to evolve and. Um, We'll see. It, it didn't feel great at the end of the run in practice, but um, we, we have overnight to get through qualifying and then work on that tonight, uh, make our final adjustments in the morning. Let's see that hand one more time. Is it steady now? I'm going to hold them together. <laughs> All right. That's Ross Chastain. <laughs> we'll see what he has in round two of qualifying. Yeah. 185 miles an hour around Las Vegas Motor Speedway. And by the way, Goodyear's brought the same tires as Kansas. Kansas worked out pretty, pretty well for Ross, as Kim mentioned. What a gorgeous day here in the desert. We're in qualifying mode to set the first five rows for the South Point 400. That's tomorrow, and you'll see it at 2.30 Eastern on NBC. Prior to that, countdown to green, and today at 7 Eastern, NASCAR countdown live on the CW, and then Xfinity Series playoffs racing gets going. That's at 7.30 on the CW. Lots of fun to be had here in Vegas. But there's also a serious side. And that serious side is we are in the midst of the playoffs, not only for the Xfinity Series, but for the Cup Series, the round of eight. Here are the fastest 10 cars from regular qualifying, and Carson Hosevar for Spire Motorsports is going to kick us off. And you heard from Ross Chastain that he was basically wide open. So now it's about probably running high through three and four to bring that momentum to the line, then pick a lane through one and two as high as you need to run around the bumps, not any higher. The other thing he said that he didn't see anyone else go wide open until he did it. So if he's right about that, then all these guys are getting ready to go, or several of them, they didn't see him run wide open until after their run. So now what do you do? Do you believe you can run wide open? Are you willing to take the chance? 29-34. Was Carson Hosevar's lap when he ran in Group A? Jeff, how big a deal is it for a rookie driver? You know, we're talking specifically qualifying to sit on the front row of a Cup race. Oh, it's huge. That was a big deal for this young man, wasn't it? Yeah, it is. 
He had an interesting week really last week. Right there, really good. A lot of contact with some drivers and at the Roval. That's a pickup, about a tenth of a second. He heard his crew chief before he ever took the start finish line. Before he took the checker, good lap, good lap. Yeah. Watching data, knowing it was a good lap. Luke Lambert. It's the Monster Energy Toyota Camry for Joe Gibbs Racing. Ty Gibbs, seven hundredths of a second, eight hundredths of a second. It's pretty close with Hoseval. He's getting that time back too. Closer, getting closer. Not going to be much in it. I was going to say, if they go in reverse order, right? So Hosevar was fifth fastest of his group. He's already outrun Gibbs, so an improvement with his second run. On track now, the Penzoil Ford for Team Penske, Joey Logano. It'll breathe out of the throttle. Uh -huh. Look how tight this is. Not going to be enough. Further underscoring that lap from Carson Hosevar. How impressive it was. Up next, here's Denny Hamlin. It's been an odd playoffs for the 11. That first round started off very, very Curious, I guess is the word I would use. The strategy to ride around of Atlanta didn't work. They were able to advance, even the second round. Just kind of hit or miss. Just waiting to see this team come to life and put some runs together that we would expect. Well, this lap's working. Sure is. Still in the green, getting better too. Faster and faster, and Denny Hamlin's going to go to the top. He won. You saw, you saw his helmet kind of move to the left. The scoring pylon here is in turn one, so <laughs> the driver can turn his head and find that scoring pylon. You want to see your name, go to your number, go to the top of that board. Carson Hosevar just congratulating and thanking his Spire Motorsports team, saying good job. Can you imagine for everything that's happened if Denny Hamlin can sit on the pole first race of the round of eight? He's got company, though. His JGR teammate, Christopher Bell, is coming. Losing a little bit of time, getting it back. It's gone green. Look at this. Christopher Bell to the line, and he's going to push his teammate off that provisional pole. Nice work for the driver of the Ream Toyota Camry. Qualifying continues here in Vegas. Next car to roll is the man who is on top. Sixth race victory last weekend. Kyle Larson, here he comes. And just part of his big picture story. Jeff, he's going for three wins in succession here in Vegas. It's highly likely. This, this, this kind of racetrack, he's, he's good everywhere, but he's so good at this kind of racetrack where you know, you go searching around a little bit for some different lines. A lot of throttle, very aggressive. And he's willing to lay it on the line. He's willing to put himself in jeopardy to get finishes. I think the strength of the five car and race trim for me was his entrance into turn three. It felt like he could have a really big arc. Get to the white line really, really, really late in the corner. I mean, look at that. Almost didn't get to the white line there, but two thirds around the corner before he tried to get there. Close. Super close. But he'll sit on top for now from this second group. Here comes his Hendrick Motorsports teammate, Alex Bowman. Christopher Bell sits on the provisional pole. Can anyone push him off that? As a whole, the entire B group was faster than the A group. I don't know if that was a track shift or the cars in general. Look at Bowman. 
Oh, just a little bit. Gave a little back there. Talk about a guy driving to prove a point. The disqualification last weekend, bounced out of the playoffs. Not quite going to do it here. Does dislodge his teammate to provisionally sit on the front row. Good lap. Really good lap. When you run that much throttle and you don't sit on the pole, you're like, mm, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Christopher Bell watches on. There is track house racing with Ross Chastain. We heard from him earlier when he spoke to Kim. He's hand shaking, nervous, knew what he had to do. Two, three hundredths of a second off at the moment. And that time is just edging away from Ross Chastain. Third row for the time being, two drivers to come. William Byron is next up. It's a Joe Gibbs Racing Hendrick Motorsports provisional front row. Off to a good start, Steve. Yeah, front row and second row. HMS and JGR are on the battle here. Byron wants to try to leapfrog his teammates. The last few cars were not able to keep pace with Bell on corner exit of two. And that time just eking away a little bit for William Byron. He's down on row four. And the biggest challenge is right here. What a race, what a story, what drama last weekend at Charlotte Motor Speedway's Roval. Tyler Reddick just showed unbelievable grit and determination and resilience. Even showed us a skateboard trick. <laughs> getting the wheels up in the air and still hung on and now he is pressing Christopher Bell it's green it's staying green he's losing a little bit of time talking thousands of a second this is so close <laughs> that's crazy oh my goodness ah, you, man. Christopher Bell the smile gets even bigger and Kim's there with the pole man yeah, and he held his cards close to the vest when we talked to him earlier about what his qualifying plan was. Whatever secrets you had, they worked. Your third Las Vegas pole. We know you have a first pole qualifying car. What do you have for the race tomorrow? I, I feel really good. I feel really comfortable. In practice, The I don't think the pace showed what we had, but inside the car, I felt super, super comfortable. So I know that uh, we're going to have a shot at it tomorrow. How much of a statement is this? I don't know. I mean, I've been in this position many of times, and obviously I've never won from the pole yet. So um, still waiting to do that, but maybe tomorrow's the day. Maybe tomorrow is the day. That's Christopher Bell. He will lead the field to green in tomorrow's Cup Series race. Do you remember Kansas? He won the pole there, and he was leading in stage one. Unforced error, hit the wall. Leading in stage two. Unforced error, hit the wall. And so maybe tomorrow is, is recovery, retribution. Maybe, just maybe, two playoff drivers fill the front row. Yeah, four inside that top eight, six inside the top ten. Only Chase Elliott and Ryan Blaney were unable to. Chase Elliott qualified in row nine. Jeff Blaney all the way at the back of the backup car. Yeah, Chase Elliott a long way to go, but a good car in race trim. You see a lot of drivers here that their year's coming to an end. They're not worried about a championship. They're racing for race wins. See, Ryan Blaney, he's going to start dead last in that backup that you just talked about, Steve. They had, their teammates had good pace in race trim, though, so they have something to go off of. So that's it. Practice and qualifying done. That man there, Christopher Bell of Joe Gibbs Racing, on the pole position and trying to make the championship four for the third consecutive year. Wouldn't that be something? A win and you're in. Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, they know all about what it takes to win a championship. We'll see who has the magic tomorrow. Coming up next here on USA, it is the Fast and the Furious. And there was some furious feelings inside the 12 camp after that. Unfortunately for Ryan Blaney, crashing out in practice, did not get a chance to qualify. We'll see him tomorrow as his playoffs quest and championship quest continues. That man there will lead them to green.